Good afternoon, Pastor. Hey, John. Good to see you. Welcome, everybody, to our random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. And today we're in our mini chapel store. You guys can see the background's a little different. Uh, today, Pastor, I want to speak on what is called the social media prophets. Mm -hmm. They can be considered social media evangelists, the Facebook prophets. Uh, I want to open up a little bit with a verse first from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And you actually gave this verse last night in your in your Bible study in Job. It says, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. You know, last week, Pastor, we spoke a little bit about division in the church and how some pulpits can use uh, can be used as to push an agenda. Mm -hmm. On a different level, we still see that there is dissension and unity that's coming from a different, but it's coming from one another and not so much from the pulpit. We're seeing that there's a division uh, among social media with Christians devouring one another. Uh, we see this on all the social media platforms where brothers and sisters in the Lord are making posts that are ca that's causing division and, and disunity and, and can have a tendency to bash one another on personal beliefs. Making statements that are condemning and condescending and bringing disunity rather than unity we call these people social media prophets. They're, yeah. they're behind their social media and they're causing division. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this because they're using this as a place to push their expertise. What are your thoughts on this, Pastor? Well, I think that there are quite a number of people who profess to be wise and uh, believe themselves to be instructors uh, simply because they've attended a church or they've read a few books they've never even done practical ministry themselves. They, they've never taught Bible studies. They've never been part of ministry leadership. They don't have a church that even have, they even have an allegiance to in terms of them serving there, giving there, and, and all of those things. They simply are, are social media, um, like you said, social media prophets. They, they've never proven themselves. I mean, Paul, when he was speaking concerning the qualifications of church leadership in First Timothy chapter three uh, made it very clear that that the leaders were to be proven that they were supposed to have their ministries um, um, demonstrated over time that they're sincere and these as is uh, as ministers themselves they were supposed to have good fruit and good fruit takes a while for uh, for it to grow to be to be seen for what it is and so what we have now is the convenience of people who aren't even committed to a church very often. They hop from one place to another, um, don't listen to the messages that they're given, not with a deep degree of concentration and a hunger to do those things that are being taught. And they end up thinking themselves qualified to rebuke people and exhort people and sometimes judge and even condemn people because they themselves consider themselves wise. And so that isn't new in the book of Acts. Uh, it's funny that, you know, the subject that you're sharing asked me to speak about a little bit or respond to. I, I'm right now preparing that. I'm preparing a message for, um, for our mentoring class that I do on Sunday, this upcoming Sunday. And, uh, and Paul is warning the uh, elders of, uh, Mile in Miletus, the elders of the church of Ephesus, in Miletus concerning uh, being on guard for infiltrators. And he, he says, you know, that they're going to come in among you. They're going to sneak in and they're going to begin to undermine. He says, but even amongst from amongst yourselves, there will be men who arise and their intent is to draw disciples after themselves. That's what's taking place right now. I mean, when you have somebody who doesn't have ministry, who's never spent time counseling, never spent time, you know, traveling, never spent time building, developing, encouraging, exhorting. But there they are telling people, don't take the shot or, or you know, you're a coward if you do or whatever. To me, that is the height of arrogance and it, it's absolutely wrong. And yet we have that. And these are people who claim to be Christian who arise from amongst us and draw disciples, Paul says, after themselves. So they're attempting to make people their followers they come to a church that has been established and has been used by God for years. And the minute they're in there, they begin to say, it could be better and with my help, it will be. 
And if people don't want to, to uh, follow me, they're carnal. And so that's kind of how it happens, John. And so, yeah, I think that uh, social media is, is, is a very poor um, way for us to actually develop a real, a real community. It's a fictitious one because there's no, there's nobody actually being close to somebody else or knowing more of them other than what they present on, on the, um, on Facebook or whatever. I mean, there's so many different platforms now. There's one particular individual who I will leave his quote unquote ministry unnamed, but he's made it his special effort to destroy Calvary Chapel, to undermine the memory of our ministries, Pastor Chuck and others, call into question people concerning um, pastors, you know, some of them friends of mine, myself included on occasion, call into question motives and, and things that relate to that. And this is a guy, you know, who has, has, has no qualifications. He's, he's never proven his own ministry. What he does is he sits in his house or his mother's basement, almost literally, and he just pounds out these missives and has his own web page and and destroys. That's that's what he does, and he's been doing it for years. So yeah, um, I think that people who go online to correct others and to teach others, you know, I I don't listen to them. Why would I? Because they're not proven. There's no way that I know who they are. I don't know their moral life. I don't. You know, Paul said. You know what manner of life I have always lived amongst you. What are you telling these Ephesian elders, Paul? That I have consistently and courageously lived out the gospel. And you have seen that, you know. And yet amongst all of these whom he's speaking to there in Miletus, it appears that there are two men that are well known. One is Timothy, who was the pastor of the church in Ephesus. He more than likely uh, was involved at that time. Very well may have been the pastor already. And another man named Demas, mm. you know, two men that we know in scripture. And, and Timothy was a faithful man that Paul wrote two letters to, to help him in his ministry. And, and Demas is, you know, his uh, epitaph, if you will, is Demas says, forsaken me having loved this present age and is departed to Thessalonica. And so you have the Demas types who are furiously pounding out their ideas and you have guys like Timothy, and it makes it difficult for us to know which is which. And if I can't see how you have lived amongst people, then how do I know that what you're teaching me is something that you've practiced? And so, you know, you know, God has told us we're, we're to have discernment, to test things, to prove things, hold fast to that, which is good, which is true. We're to hold fast to the things that, that are obviously uh, aligning with scripture and the other things, you're just a waste of your time in reading or listening. Yes, and then you, you, you make a great point with this people trying to cause this dissension and without being proven, they, they can be considered those jerks for Jesus. Yeah, that's an know? interesting term. <laughs> <laughs> or who think they have to, you know, and you don't see Jesus doing where, where was Where did Jesus bully people? Where did Jesus speak down to people? You know, the only people that Jesus really got strong with are the Pharisees, the really religious leaders who Jesus himself said are hypocritical. And so, you know, you traverse the world, you know, trying to make a disciple and you make him twice the child of hell that you yourselves are. I mean, you know, he, he made it very, very, very clear that his problem was not with the, the sinner um, who really didn't profess to know God. It was the religious one claim to know him better than everybody else and and John that's what we see today I think it's unhealthy I think it's a sickness in the church I, I I think that people who do that ought to be convicted and stop and if you can't speak the truth in love then don't speak at all because there are too many Christians who are who are really undermining the work that God wants to do in people's life John I've been in 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 service to the Lord a long time. I've been a Christian for 50 years. I've, I've taught Bible studies for 47, 48 years in, in September. I've pastored this church for 40 years. Uh, in July, we, we will celebrate our 40th church anniversary. I've been pastoral minister since 1979. So I've ministered to a lot of people over the years. And 
And I've seen a lot of, 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 of um, social warriors, uh, spiritual social warriors, and, and they normally are people who are uh, paper tigers. They can pound out their ideas, uh, type them out furiously, but there's no accountability. And they will not listen to anybody who says to them, this was wrong, your attitude was wrong. Who are you to judge me? So I have to tell you, John, I think it's a sickness in the church. Mm -hmm. And this COVID thing made it even more possible for more to come out from under the covers and, and expose their, their prideful and arrogant, self-righteous uh, uh, proclamations. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really don't like it. If you can't proclaim the love of Christ and be honest about the things that we need to hear, um, then please, Take time to refine your thoughts and, and speak like Paul said, uh, in love for people, caring about their souls. Mm -hmm. How many are we turning away because of our angry angry diatribes? I have a real problem, as you know, with that. Yes, and, and it's infecting the church and yes. really undermining the love of Christ. And Yes, absolutely. Um, well, Pastor, thank you so much for that. Uh, this was uh, interesting, but I think much needed uh, interview because we do see this going on and and, uh, and we just hope that people can keep their eyes on Christ. Well, let's hope that they do. <laughs> you looked right at me when you said yes, that. Yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, so much. And you guys, uh, for those who are wanting to go to Israel this Sunday after our uh, 1045 a.m. service, second service, we have our Israel information meeting. If you're thinking about going to Israel or just want to get some questions answered, Come check us out. It's going to be in the sanctuary immediately following, following second service. And we do have our services at 8.30 a.m. and 10.45. We look forward to seeing you guys. And we're speaking this week on uh, Revelation chapter 22, uh, verses 6 through 12. And we're speaking concerning if Christ is really returning, how then should we live? Mm. Kind of ties in exactly what we're talking about. I think so. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you guys. Pastor David, thank you so much. God bless you guys. Enjoy.